Uh, we've seen how to derive the potential energy expression for one dimensional finite elements. Today what we'll see is if we have the expression for the potential energy, how do we use that to solve for Q that is the displacements. We know that once I have the displacements, I can calculate the stresses, strains and uh, uh, the variation of stresses and strains in the body. Okay. So, we have seen that uh, we have been representing Q by a vector which is given by Q1, Q2 till Qn if there are n nodes in the body. Okay. n is the number of nodes, the number of nodes. Okay. And F which is the force vector which is F1, F2, F3 till Fn both these are global uh, vectors or global matrices. Q is a global displacement matrix, F is a global force matrix and K is a global stiffness matrix. This global stiffness matrix will be n by n matrix and uh, the terms of these uh, matrix I am writing them as K11, K12 till K1n in the first row and so on. Okay, so this is a global stiffness matrix and we have seen that the potential energy pi is equal to half of Q transpose K Q minus Q transpose F. Okay. If I expand out this term, okay, what I will get will be an expression of this type. Let us say half, <coughs> let us say I will put this in brackets Q1 K11 Q1 plus Q1 K12 Q2 plus Q1 K13 Q3 so on up to Q1 K1N. Qn. Okay. That is the first row. Plus, it will become Q2, K21, Q1 plus Q2, K22, Q2 plus Q3, K23, Q3. So on up to Q2, K2n, Qn. Okay. Plus, we will have other terms Qn, Kn1, Q1 plus Qn, Kn2, Q2 plus Qn, Kn3, Q3, so on, Qn, Knn, Qn. Okay, this whole thing plus sorry minus Q transpose times F that will give us Q1 F1 plus Q2 F2 plus Q3 F3 so on up to okay. <coughs> This you should be able to see easily was Q transpose is a row vector consisting of Q1, Q2, Q3, Qn. Q is a column vector and K is an n by n matrix. Okay, let's look at this. So if I multiply Q transpose, which is a row vector, by this matrix, the first term that I'll get will be Q1 multiplied by K11 plus Q2 multiplied by K21 and so on. Okay. So, this row multiplied by this column that will give you the first term and that term will then be multiplied by Q1 when I multiplied by Q. Okay, Let us look at that step carefully.
this is the expression we have to evaluate. If I take this row and multiply it with this column, okay, the first term that I will get would be Q1 multiplied by K11 plus Q2 multiplied by K21 plus so on up to Qn multiplied by Kn1. Okay, similarly, if I take this row and multiply it by the second column, I will get the terms Q1 multiplied by K12 plus Q2 multiplied by K22 so on up to Qn multiplied by Kn2. And I will get a row of terms like this. If I take this row of terms and multiply it by this column, this set of terms is multiplied by Q1, okay, plus this set of terms is multiplied by Q2, so on till the last term will be multiplied by Qn. Okay. If I multiply this set of terms with Q1, I will get this first line that I have written. Okay. This set of terms I am multiplying by Q1. I will get Q1, K11 multiplied by Q1, Q2, K21 multiplied by Q1, okay, which is uh, Okay, K1, K12 and K21 are the same, so it is the same thing. Actually, it is this column. Okay. Qn, Kn1 multiplied by Q1, which is this or this. All these terms are symmetric. Okay, so it does not make a difference. We have all, uh, already mentioned that this K matrix is a symmetric matrix. Okay. So, this X term, half of Q transpose Kq, can be written in this manner. Okay, and Q transpose F that will give us this expression. Is that okay? Okay. <coughs> now, if you take any uh, actual problem, and this has been divided into a set of finite elements. Okay. Typically, we will have some boundary conditions. Let us say this is my node number 1, this is my node number 2, this is 3, 4 and so on up to n. Okay. Let us say in this case, I have some loading, I am taking a one dimensional loading, so I have some loads acting in this direction. Okay. So, if I take this particular problem, my boundary conditions typically would be of the form, let us say Q1 is equal to 0. Okay. Or if uh, let us say even this end is fixed, I might also have a constraint like Qn is equal to 0. Okay. So, let us say we consider boundary conditions of the type where some Qi is equal to a i. Okay. <coughs> Meaning, this a i in this particular case is 0. In some cases, we might give it a fixed displacement at one end. Okay. Therefore, we will have a, uh, we will consider boundary condition of the type q i is equal to a i or instead of q i equal to a i, we will write it as q of p 1 is equal to a 1. Q of P2 is equal to A2 and so on. Let us say Q of Pm is equal to Am. Okay, what I am basically saying is that I have M nodes. Okay, M nodes which are constrained and these node numbers are P1, P2 till Pm. So, I have got m nodes 
and these m nodes are constrained by displacements a1 a2 am okay so in this case i have q1 equal to 0 and maybe qn equal to 0 so p1 will be equal to 1 p2 will be equal to n a1 will be equal to 0 and a2 will be equal to 0 okay that will give me these two constraints okay so if i consider constraints of this type where some particular node number is constrained to have a fixed displacement okay these type of constraints are what we will refer to as single point constraints Yeah, we are talking of let us say if you have any uh, any problem that will have some boundary conditions okay we are trying to formulate these boundary conditions okay I am saying that right now we will consider boundary conditions which are of single point type okay that means some particular node is constrained to have a fixed displacement. The value of the variable itself is known. The value of the variable which we are looking for is known at some points. Yeah the value of the displacement that we are looking for. That's okay, that is known at yeah, that is known at some particular nodes. Okay, because unless there are some boundary condition, the system cannot be solved. Okay, because if I have a, a body which is not constrained and I apply some force to it, it will start moving. Okay, so that it has to be constrained in some way. It is constrained means the nodes which are constrained will have a fixed displacement. Okay, so we are saying that we consider some of those nodes which will have fixed displacement of this type that is qp1 is a1 qp2 is a2 and so on okay so now in this expression or using this expression of potential energy okay this this long expression we'll see how we can incorporate these single point constraints and then solve the system for finding other displacements okay now we have boundary condition of this type let us take as an example a simple boundary condition which is q1 is equal to a1 okay that means the node number 1 has a fixed displacement of a1 if I consider this boundary condition q1 is equal to a1 we will see how we can solve the system of equation or system uh, the will how, how we can solve the system for the displacement if this is a boundary condition given to us Okay, once we know how to solve the system with one constraint, we can easily generalize it to having multiple constraints. Okay, so we will establish the method for uh, solving the system with one constraint of the type q1 equal to a1. Okay. Now, if we look at this expression and I add the constraint that q1 is equal to a1 this potential energy expression I can replace all q1s by a1s okay because my constraint is q1 is equal to a1 okay so let us say in this I just change it over here all q1s I will change them to a1s Again, if you notice q1 will appear only in the first row and in the first column q1 will not appear anywhere else okay similarly q2 will appear only in the second column and the second row q2 will not appear anywhere else okay q3 will appear in the third column and in the third row okay so when we are replacing q1 in the first row and in the first column we will replace all occurrences of q1 by a1 okay this is the expression we have 
for potential energy when the constraint is q1 is equal to a1 okay now <coughs> we will make sure of the fact that we have stated earlier that we mentioned earlier that if we have a potential energy expression this is the potential energy expression we have we mentioned earlier that in equilibrium del pi by del q i will be equal to 0 q i are the different parameters that we have okay in fact when we stated the Rayleigh Reeds method we mentioned that the partial derivative of the potential energy with respect to each of the parameters should be equal to 0 okay so if you use this const uh, this uh, constraint the first expression that we will get q1 in this case is a constant because i said q1 is equal to a1 okay i said q1 is equal to a1 so first derivative will be with respect to q2 del pi by del q2 and if i have to differentiate with respect to q2 let us look at this uh, expression as I said q2 will appear in the second column and in the second row if I differentiate this term with respect to q2 I will get these two terms if I dif differentiate this with respect to q2 I will get this these two terms multiplied by 2 ok if I differentiate this oh sorry Two times. Okay, if I differentiate this with respect to q2, I'll get this term. If I differentiate this, this term with respect to q2, I'll get this. If I look at the second column, if I differentiate this with respect to q2, I'll get this. Okay, similarly, the next term that I will have over here will contain uh, that would be k32 that will be multiplied by q3 and q2. Okay, so when I differentiate this with respect to q2, I will get this term. If I differentiate this, I will get this term. Okay, and all this is multiplied by half. And Q2 is also appearing in the fourth term. If I differentiate this with respect to Q2, I will get this term. Okay. Now, from symmetry, I know that K12 is the same as K21. K23 is the same as K32 and k2n is the same as kn2 okay so this column is the same as this row so i can basically say two times the row and half of that that will again cancel out okay so when i differentiate this with respect to q2 i'll basically get this one single row of the terms that i have underlined that k22 is not repeated I have a factor of 2 anyway ok so that will get cancelled out so basically I will get this term plus this term plus this term plus this term and so on ok minus I will get F2 ok so what will I get <coughs> the first term is k21 multiplied by a1 so i'll get this will be equal to k21 multiplied by a1 the second term is k22 q2 half of that so plus k22 times q2 
this will be k 2 3 times q 3 will be plus k 2 3 times q 3 so on up to plus k 2 n times q n this is this last term that I have minus f 2 I will say minus f 2 ok or I will write this as I will see this k 2 1 times a 1 is a constant and so is f 2 the only variables here are q 2 q 3 till q n ok so I will write this as k 2 2 times q 2 plus k 2 3 times q 3 q n is a 2 again q n is a 2 q n is a 2 <coughs> what is a 2 no constraint on this side I have taken only one constraint right now that q 1 is equal to a 1 if I have two constraints I will generalize this thing uh, later on ok so I am taking only one constraint that q 1 is equal to a 1 ok so k 2 2 times q 2 plus k 2 3 times q 3 this will go on up to k 2 n times q n and this minus I will say f 2 minus k 2 1 a 1 ok and this is del pi by del q 2 and this has to be equal to 0 ok similarly if I find del pi by del q 3 ok I will carry out the differentiation with respect to q 3 now when I differentiate with respect to q 3 I will get this term, I will get this term, so on I will get a column of terms from here plus I will get a row of terms from here ok and I will get this term ok. If I simplify them what I will get finally, I will get this will give me a 1 k 1 3 or if I am writing k 2 1 let me write ok a 1 k 1 3 plus uh, k 2 3 <coughs> times q 3 sorry k 2 3 times q 2 plus k 3 3 times q 3 so on up to plus k 3 n times q n minus f 3 ok and again a 1 k 1 3 I will take it along with f 3 so this will be equal to k 2 3 times q 2 plus k 3 3 times q 3 so on plus k 3 n times q n minus f 3 minus k 3 1 a 1 k 1 3 and k 3 1 are the same ok I can write either it does not make a difference ok and this again has to be equal to 0 ok this way I can write down a system of equations this is del pi by del q 3 my last term would be del pi by del q n ok and that I will get a similar expression which will give me k 2 n times q 2 plus k 3 n times q 3 so on till plus k n n times q n minus f n minus k n 1 times a 1 will be equal to 0 ok. So, this way I now have a system of equations 
Okay, and this system of equations has got n minus one equations in it, and it has n minus one variables. Okay, but initially we had n nodes. Out of those n nodes, I have constrained one. So my variables are q2, q3 till qn, which are n minus one variables. And my differentiation has been with respect to q2, q3 till qn, which is again n minus one equations. Okay, so I have n minus one linear equations and n minus one variables. I can solve them out directly. So, but then what was the need for the constraint? Because if you wouldn't have a constraint. You would have had n equations in n variables, and you well, still solve. Well, then you would uh, find that the equations won't be uh, independent. independent, and that you can see very easily. If I take any uh, object like this, and I give it a force, okay, the object is going to move. Okay, if the object is going to move, uh, the deformations they're not they're all the same. So, I think so that's going to be a trivial solution. Just one one minute. That is going to give me a trivial solution. Okay, so if we uh, try to differentiate and get that, we'll get the system of equations to be dependent. They won't be independent of one another. Okay, you are saying something? So, uh, contrary to this, I think the equation would be uh, independent, but we won't be having a unique answer because it, it means the whole system is floating anywhere in the world, anywhere. So, we'll be having. Uh, if you have n, if you have n equation and n variables, and the uh, equation uh, independent. Then you will always get a unique solution. The only time when you don't get a unique solution is when the system is dependent. Okay. So coming back to these equations, now you've got a system of n minus one equations. Let's just rewrite these equations. This equation I can write that as the first one k two two q two plus K two three Q three, so on till K two n Q n is equal to F two minus K two one A one. Okay. The second equation that we have is K two three Q two plus K three three Q three, so on till K three n Q n. Is equal to F three minus K three one A one. Okay, and the last in the series would be K two n Q two plus K three n Q three. So on till K n n Q n will be equal to F n minus K n one A one. Okay. Basically, I've written this equation, this equation, and I just rewritten these equations again. Okay. Now I'll write this again in a matrix form, and this system of equations, uh, this can be written as Okay, so th this system of equations can be written in a matrix form like this. This is the matrix of the k coefficient that I have, k two two, k two three, so on to k two n, and n equation. The same I have repeated here, multiplied by these deformations q two, q three to q n, 
that is the column vector I have taken and this will be equal to this right hand side of the equations okay. Now if you compare this matrix with the stiffness global stiffness matrix that we had with this global stiffness matrix okay you will find that these terms are all the same as these terms except that the first column and the first row have been deleted okay q2 to qn is the same as the q vector except that q1 has been deleted and this force vector is the same as this force vector except that f1 has been deleted and these terms have been subtracted. What has been subtracted? I have taken the first column of the stiffness matrix, multiplied it by a1 and subtracted it from each of these terms. Okay. K21 multiplied by a1 that is this term, K31 multiplied by a1 will be a term here, Kn1 multiplied by a1 is a term here. So, these individual terms are subtracted from F2, F3, so on till Fn. Okay. So, this system of equations, you write them as, we will say K prime, Q prime will be equal to F prime. Okay. Where, where K prime has been obtained by taking the stiffness matrix and deleting the first column and the first row. Okay. Q prime has been obtained by deleting Q1 and F prime has been obtained by deleting F1 and subtracting this column multiplied by A1 from the other force terms. Okay. And this system of equations K prime, Q prime is equal to F prime this we can solve using any uh, any method for solving a system of linear equations. Okay, once I solve this I will get the values of Q prime I mean values of the terms in Q prime and then once I know the Q terms I can find out epsilon and I can find out sigma. Okay, so, the basic uh, method of solving is that we will first establish the system of we will first establish the finite element problem by specifying q, f and k. We will get the global matrices, so, uh, add the boundary conditions, get these modified matrices. Okay, This is a modified stiffness matrix. I have modified it by removing the first row and the first column. Okay, My constraint was q1 is equal to a1. Since Q1 was constraint, I deleted the first row and the first column and I got K prime. I got Q prime by removing Q1 and I got F prime by modifying F. Okay, I modify the three matrices K, Q and F and I get this system of equations which I can solve to get the different values of Q. Okay. So, this is how we can solve the finite element problem or a one dimensional finite element problem. Any questions up to this point? This method is called uh, elimination method. It is called the elimination method because <coughs> we are eliminating one row and one column and corresponding terms from q and f. Okay, we initially had n equations uh, sorry n by n matrix in q in k we eliminated some terms out of it we eliminated q1 the constraint variable q1 is being eliminated. Okay, that is why we are saying it is an elimination method. Okay, this is the elimination method for solving for q. Okay. 
Any questions up to this point? <coughs> okay, then let us take up the same example that we, we had earlier. That is okay. I think this dimension was six inches, this was three inches, and the load here was hundred. Okay, and if I remember correctly, the density was given as 0 0.28 and uh, E was given as um, 3 into 10 to the power 7 PSI. Okay, and this we formulated as a FE problem at taking two elements like this. For the first element A1, the area of cross section we said would be 5.25 for second element the area of cross section A2 would be 3.75 square inches okay and we had found out the local stiffness matrix <coughs> the element stiffness matrix matrices K1 K2 as E1 A1 by L1 into 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and this was similarly E2 A2 by L2 multiplied by 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 okay the constraint this is node number 1 this is node number 2 this is node number 3 my constraint in this case says Q1 will be equal to 0 okay and I would also derive the global stiffness matrix K as a 3 by 3 matrix okay and the f you can check up the figures I think the figures are something like this I might be wrong at that you can correct me And uh, the global force matrix F, I think, was This is the global force matrix. Okay, uh, I think this is multiplied by ten to the power seven. Okay, and now the constraint that we have is Q one is equal to zero. If I add this constraint at Q one is equal to zero by the elimination method, what I'll do is I have to remove the first row. So the first column and the first row from the K matrix. Okay, so corresponding to that, my K prime will be these four terms. Okay, and this would give me 2.25 minus 0 0.94 minus 0 0.94 and 0 0.94. Multiplied by 10 to the power 7. Okay, my F prime would be this matrix F with the first term deleted. Okay, and in the, from the other two terms, I have to subtract. What do I have to subtract? A1 multiplied by Q1. K, uh, K21. K21 K21 multiplied by A1 
for here I'll have to subtract k31 multiplied by a1 but a1 is 0 ok so my f prime will be equal to these two terms that is uh, 54 into 0 0.28 plus 100 and this would be uh, 22 into 0 0.28 transpose so this will be f prime and q prime is of course q2 q3 ok so this is my system of equations will now become k prime q prime is equal to f prime ok where k prime and f prime are given by this and of course q prime is equal to q2 q3 ok so now I have a system of equations there are two variables two equations I can easily solve it out and I think if you solve it we get values like q2 is equal to 0 0.93 in 10 to the power minus 5 inches and q3 is equal to 0 0.99 into 10 to the power minus 5 inches ok this means that q2 the deformation here the deformation here is 0.93 into 10 to the power minus 5 and the deformation here is 0.99 into 10 to the power minus 5 inches ok <coughs> these are q2 q3 and of course q1 is equal to 0 ok so now my q vector which is q1 q2 q3 transpose is these three terms q1 is 0 q2 is this much q3 is this much ok now if I have to find out epsilon that is the strain my epsilon in the first element is given by b times q ok if you remember your earlier formulation we had said u is equal to n times q and epsilon is equal to b times q ok and what is b b is 1 over length of the element multiplied by 1 sorry minus 1 1 this is equal to b ok so b in this case the length of the element is 12 inches so b would be 1 by 12 into minus 1 1 multiplied by q the q matrix for the first element will consist of q1 q2 ok well the deformation of the first node is q1 deformation of the second node is q2 ok so this multiplied by q1 q2 ok and this you can find out uh, what that would be we know q1 as uh, 0 and q2 as 0 0.93 into 10 power minus 5 ok so from this you can get the value of epsilon in the first element similarly epsilon in the second element will be b times q which will be 1 over 12 into minus 1 1 multiplied by q2 q3 ok and q2 and q3 are again obtained from here so I can get the value of epsilon in the second element ok if I get epsilon in the second element once I know the two epsilon I can get sigma 1 to be equal to e times epsilon 1 and sigma 2 to be equal to e times epsilon 2 I can get the stresses and the strains <coughs> in both the elements ok uh, we, have, we have already mentioned right in the beginning that the stresses within the element will be constant the strains within the element will be constant 
okay because we have assumed that there is no variation of strains within the element okay these elements are constant strain elements so the strain within this element will be constant and will be at the level of epsilon 1 the strain within this element will be constant and at a level of epsilon 2 okay so this is how we can uh, solve a, solve a problem like this for finding out the deformations stresses and strains the basic thing we do is we formulate it as a finite element problem find out the elemental stiffness matrices and the force matrices assemble the global matrices and then apply the boundary conditions and solve use the elimination method to find out the values of q okay once we know q we can go back and calculate epsilon that is the strains and the stresses okay yeah what's the question sir how valid is this assumption that the strains within the elements are okay uh, see basically what we are saying is that if we take the elements small enough the assumption will be more accurate how do we decide it is small enough how do we decide whether it is small enough okay typically for deciding whether it is small enough uh, <coughs> one way is that you keep adjusting your element size to see whether you have reached a certain level of accuracy or what you do is if in a certain area you expect that the stresses will be very high there you take a smaller element size okay if you take a smaller element size your assumption will be more accurate the areas where you don't uh, expect very high stresses you don't want a very uh, uh, very accurate uh, estimate of stresses and strains there you can take larger element size okay but whatever the element size be the assumption will never be 100 percent accurate we have methods of estimating the error okay we try to estimate <coughs> how much is the error that has been introduced we won't go into that at the moment okay any other questions okay in that case i'll stop now in the next class uh, we'll see another method of solving the same system of equation that is the penalty approach and then we'll go on to the galakins method